girls, um, this story, this letter from Rivka, just let's recap what happened in these last two letters. Rivka um, walked out of the car, car in her train on the way to Warsaw and met with a young Polish girl. She touched her hair. And uh, even though she saw these horrible sores on the gir girl's head, and lo and behold, what happens to Rivka is that she herself has become infected with the fungus um, called ringworm that causes these sores. Today, we can treat ringworm quite easily, but back then it took months. Well, and it still can take months here, even today. It took months to cure. It's very contagious, and so Rivka is not allowed to leave Europe. If you remember, when you took your tour of Ellis Island, um, that virtual tour that I asked you to take, you probably came across stories where people were sent back or they were examined by doctors. And so we can see this playing out in the story here with Rivka. It is now December 1st, just a couple days later, and we're going to see what decision is made with Rivka and her family. Will they all stay back and or will they go without her and leave her behind? Can you imagine being 12 and being left behind in Europe? So let's see, at the top of the page here, the quote from Pushkin reads, as conquered by the last cold air, when winter whistles in the wind, alone upon a branch that's bare, a trembling leaf is left behind. Hmm. Let's read on. December 1st, 1919, Warsaw, Poland. Dear Tova, Papa and Mama met with a lady from the HIAS. That is the Hebrew Immigrant Aid Society. They are a group of people who help Jews with troubles like ours. The lady said, the HIAS has workers all over the world. I wonder why we never met any in Burdichev or Motsiv. Have you heard of them? The lady from the HIAS gave us money to buy food. She sat with us in our room and listened to our troubles. She was no taller than I am. Wisps of silver hair kept escaping from a bun on the top of her head. She said, Mr. and Mrs. Nebro, you and your two sons should leave for America as planned, but Rivka must stay until her ringworm heals. To leave a child of twelve, Papa said, how can we do such a thing? It is not so unusual, the HIAS lady said. We have handled many such cases. Awful things are happening to, uh, to me, Tova. My hair is falling out. My long, blonde hair. I have a bald patch over one ear and another on the back of my head. I can cover it with the kerchief, but it itches and itches. I know I must be ugly, because Mama's eyes look away from me all the time now. Can't Mama stay with me? I asked. The lady from the HIAS said, if your mama goes to America, excuse me for a second. There we go. If your mama goes to America, she can work and make money for the family. She can make a home for your your father and your brothers. If your mama stays in Europe with you, she will cost the family money. Only you must stay, Rivka. I will not stay in Warsaw. I told the lady from the HIAS. If my family leaves me in Warsaw, I will find a way back to my home in Berdichev. The lady from the HIAS said, I want you to leave Warsaw also, but not for Berdichev. The cure for your illness awaits you in Belgium. Mama said, Belgium? What is Belgium? I have never heard of this place. It is the best place for Rivka now, the HIAS lady said. The people of Belgium open their arms and their homes to immigrants. That is what I am, Tova. That is what you are when you are wandering between two worlds. 
You are an immigrant. The HIAS lady said, We can arrange for Rivka to stay with a family in Antwerp. She will go each day to a hospital and get her treatment for her ringworm. When you are all better, Rivka, you can sail to America right from Antwerp and join your mama and papa and all your brothers. I don't want to stay with a family I don't know, I said. I remembered the innkeeper's daughter in Mozi, the one who ate my herring. What if the family I stay with in Belgium is like hers? I do not want to be anywhere without my family. Even Saul would be better than no one. If they would just let Saul stay with me. Saul does not want to stay. All Saul cares about is getting to America. The HIAS lady said, In Antwerp, there will be someone from my organization to look out for you, to monitor your care. I said, If I can't go to America, please send me back to Berdichev. Papa said, Rivka, the Russians are angry at our family in Berdichev. We have cheated them of five strong boys. The army wanted your brothers. They wanted Isaac and Asher and Reuben and Nathan and Saul. I could not let them have my sons. Nathan sat with his hands clasped in his lap. Saul stood with his back to me, staring out the little window of our room. Rivka, Papa said, you cannot go back to our home in Berdichev. We have no more home in Berdichev. You too would meet your death if you returned now. Your coming back would put all the family remaining, Tova and Bobe Ruth and Aunt Anna and all the others in greater danger. I do not want to put you in danger, Tova. I must go to Belgium. I see that. But I feel so frightened. What will become of me? Tova, I am like an orphan now. Shalom, Rivka.